Hi, welcome to Finite Power Videos. This is DC here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to activate Mifair card using PN5180 board. So these are things I would like to cover in this video. You're going to see what are the commands that are used to activate a Mifair card. And the reason I took a Mifair card is because the Mifair card has been there for so many years and you know it's also in a very cheaper to buy and you know you, you got lots of documentation about Mifair card and if you have been following my video series in the last video I spoke about how to read and write to various registers and in this video you're going to see there are so many reads and writes that are going to happen using this activation process and also you're going to understand a few more commands as well now I'm going to show you how to activate a classic Mifair which has got a 4 byte UID and this also includes the newer version of the Mifair that is Mifair EV1 as well. I'm going to show you how to activate the NFC compatible tags like NTAC213, the ultralight and these are all the 7 byte UID tags and and in the Mifair Classic tags, I'm, I'm also going to show you how to authenticate the tag. You know, Mifair Classic tags, you can read and write only after success authentication. And also, that the authentication protocol used in Mifair Classic is uh, proprietary. So, you cannot authenticate uh, in any other chip. So, the chip has to come from the NXP. So, there is a command in PN5180 to authenticate. So in doing this activation process, you're going to learn about so many registers and uh, so many commands. So you're going to see commands like, you know, ready frequency on. You're going to see a few reads and writes to registers and also new commands like send data, read data, authenticate commands. And, and also you're going to see uh, the operation of these registers. You're going to see, see all these register thing and you know, I'll be touching in brief because I mentioned in my previous videos um, like every register has got information that that has got both uh, for the software developers point of view as well as the hardware designers point of view so I'll be touching those bits in the registers that are required for the developer so you're going to see the IRQ enable register IRQ status register IRQ clear register and the CRC RF config register, CRC RF uh, co TX config is a RX stands for the receiver and TX stands for the transmitter and also the RX status register. Now you have to have the data sheet of PN5180 with you during this video. So before you can start sending the activation commands we have to understand how the type A the activation is done. Now there's a nice document I found which is in uh, which is called the Mayfair Ultralight uh, document. You can get this from internet. So in order to activate a, a type A tag with the 7 byte UID, so these are the commands you have to send. The first command is the REQA and this command must go as a 7 bit value. So in response to that you get a 2 byte of data that's 4400 and this number depends on the type of the tag but for the timing will not will not go into that detail so what you have to keep in mind at this at this point of time is when you send REQA you get a two bytes of response and this response AT, called ATQA has got more information about the type of the tag and you know other things but the Mifair uh, recommends not to use this uh, two bytes after that the anti-collision process starts. So the first is you have to send the anti-collision command. This is called the first anti-collision command and in return you get the first four bytes of the UID. Again there got something called cascade tag and other things. I've made so many videos on uh, the activation of uh, Mifair uh, uh, type A. I would advise you to uh, you know look at them. So the next command that goes in here is something else I forgot here. Okay. Now, when we send this RQA command, we just have to take a note on this information integrity. So, it's only the parity sent. You might come across in the later commands, 
CRC as well. Now, if you don't see the CRC here, so it, it means this commands need sending without the CRC. Keep in mind, the CRC is automatically computed by the by the PN five hundred zero chip. So, but there is a mechanism. There is a way to disable this automated uh, CRC calculation, and the CRC is also utilized to verify the the data receiving received from the tag. So, CRC is like a like an error checking code, which is sent uh, when the data goes from PN five hundred zero to the tag and also to check the integrity of the data in the response. So if you don't see the CRC, so you have to keep in mind, you have to send this command without the CRC and with, in this particular command, you have to make sure only seven bit of data is sent. I'm going to show you how all these things are done. They're pretty straightforward. So if you look at the command structure of anti-collusion one, you have to send the command 93 followed by 20. And also here, there is no CRC. But however, so uh, when, when you send the anti-collision, you get a five byte of response here. So you have to make a note of that. And the next command is the select the collision one. During this command, you're going to send 9370 followed by the, the first four bytes of the, the previous the anti-collision response. Plus, take a note here, you have to send the CRC. So, before you send this uh, select command, you have to enable the CRC. And in response, you get one byte of data that is 04. And also, if you look at here, this is the response you get from the tag, which has got uh, 04 and also the CRC. And also, it's very, very clear in this diagram, the command that is sent from the, from the chip includes everything and also the CRC. Now this is a, a, a clue for us uh, to enable the auto CRC computation uh, just before sending this command. So likewise, the next is anti-collision 2. Now if you are if you are using a MIFI classic with only 4 byte UID, we end up in this command. So there is no anti-collision 2 because in the anti-collision one itself, all the four bytes of the UID are received. If you are using a MIFIR ultralight with a seven byte, it could be a desfire also, MIFIR desfire also. So here you start the anti-collision two. Again, you just have to make a note here. You have to make sure no CRC is sent here and it's uh, still sent eight bytes. So all, except the REQA, all these bytes are sent as a eight by eight bits. In response to that, you'll also receive a five byte of data, and this five bytes of data is also accompanied by CRC. Now you have to make sure uh, both the transmitter, sorry, uh, not the transmitter because transmission we don't want a CRC. The receiving end you need a, a CRC. So after that, yeah. So these are the commands you're going to send in order to activate the card. And after that, you can start reading if it's a MIFI Classic or you'll uh, go to the authentication state if it's a, a MIFI Classic. Now, there is a command called send data, and this is the command we'll be using most often. Now, this command is used to send the command to the tag. And this command, you're going to specify whether to send the eight bits or whether to send just you know less than eight bits and this parameter works only for the last byte that is sent with the command now this is what you're going to use we just saw the rqa command needs sending in seven bits so you have to set this as zero seven and you can send a maximum of 260 bytes to the tag so before we send this command because this command needs sending with the seven bit Plus, we have to disable the CRC computation for both uh, the transmitter side and the receiver side. So you can see here, uh, I've connected my PN5180 board. And the first thing I'm going to do is disable the CRC. And the CRC is stored in the registry called the CRC TX and the CRC RX. 
to the summer here now if you select as soon as you click you can see all the the individual bits so I'm going to go one with the last value here I'm going to set this in a which is just first of all let's go and read this command now just miss something you know so because we are working with the the type a tags you have to first initialize the board with all the parameters you know to read and write to the type a so you do that by loading the configuration again i'm going to have a separate video about this uh, configuration thing but for the timing make sure you know your pn580 is already initialized to work with the type a tags and which which i think is the default value of the the configuration so as soon as you power on this board uh, the chip is already configured for the default value however will not go with the with that assumption so i am going to have the transmitter side as this and the receiver side also as that and i'm going to say load the configuration the load now you got the pn580 ready for uh, to talk to a, a type a tax so that's the first thing you know you have to do now we'll go to the the rx crc rx config register if you read this is the default value you get and this is the this is exactly what is happening when you run this uh, load configuration now for any type a protocol these are the default values and if you look at here the crc is already enabled okay so but for us to use a requa we don't want the crc to be enabled now I can't just go the way you do that here is you know uh, untick that and say when you click the update you get the equivalent hex number here then you're going to hit the right so what we are basically doing is we are retaining all the values as it is except the CRC bit is set to set to zero I'm okay with that so because this is this does the job but I'm going to show you a different way for the transmitter so first thing is this the crc thing going to write now you have to wait for this response zero one so look at the the command structure this is a it's a simple a write register command so the, the write command the name of the register and the value the 32 bit value in the in the lowest significant byte first we've done this for the the, the receiver side and the transmitter side we have to go with the CRC TX config, which is the register 19 in hex. This time, first I want to read. When you read, because of the default load configuration, these are the default values. Again, the values what you see here, it's it also depends on the the antenna of this design. So maybe you get a different values if you are on a different board. Now here, I'm I don't want this value, but however, this time I'm going to use uh the the and operation now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select all i'm going to create a and masking so i want a mask yeah there are so many rfcs here so don't worry about that in fact uh, okay, you could have just gone here and typed all ffs just the last bit as e okay now this is the this is the mask where the last bit is set to zero now when you do the logical and operation you will end up resetting this rf uh, the last uh, the cs enable for transmitter zero so i'm going to click on and here and say right now the right operation looks like successful but if you want to make sure it's a return probably now what i would do is I'm just going to make this as all zeros and uh, give a read operation and make sure that you know it's uh, it's set so we have the crc disabled the next thing is we will start sending uh, the requa command so we have seen already the the send data command uh, whose main job is to transfer or transmit the data to the tag and next important command is the read data command so this is the command we use to read any responses you receive from from the tag now the way the send and the receive tag the work is so it's something like you know they all have 
an internal buffer. Say, assume that this is the this is the tag here, and this is you know in the electromagnetic field. This is the field, and this is the the PN five one eight zero the chip. This has got internal. It has got a transmit buffer and a receive buffer. So I'm going to call this as a transmit buffer and the receive buffer. Now this is our software, or this is the host. Now, when we send the command to the tag, all the bytes are first transfer to the transmit buffer, and in fact, the data stays there. Now there is a command called the write data command. The write data command does exactly what I mentioned now. All the data we the host transfer to the PN five hundred zero is just stuck here, and there is a separate command you can use to used to transfer all the bytes to the tag. Now any response that is coming from the tag is stored in the, the receive buffer and you can use this read data command to transfer any data in the receive buffer back to the host. Now that's how you know uh, the whole um, the send data and the receive data works and you have to understand this simple concept you know it's a sending the send data transfers the data that's in the buffer to the RF tag and the read data will read the data from the buffer and return to the host. Now I'm going to use this uh, commands tab. Now here you know there is a button for RF on so we need to turn this RF on so I'm going to do that now because without the RF on, RF on no command you know get transferred to the tag. So when you hit that this will take a little bit more time than any other commands, so you have to wait for this uh, response zero one, and this is the command called one six zero zero. So these are some of the helpful uh, uh, help you know we are provided here. So I would like to send the command RQA. So this is I'm going to use the send data. There is some help here. So the first byte is always the command byte. You can go and edit this uh, this text at any time. Okay, but if you know uh, what type of what commands you you're typing, you can just clear that and start typing. So here I'm going to send the RQA, which is uh, seven bits. That's what documentation says, and and the byte is two six. Now you don't have to worry about any of things here. You just click this uh, execute. Now we know that this command has been transmitted. Now this is the command is gone in, and if this command were executed successfully, you should receive uh, the response. However, in my case, it will not work because I have not got any tag on the board. I'm just going to take okay. What I've done is I made a small a paper bridge, so I don't have to keep holding the tag. So now we are ready to do our EQA and the, the activation. So I'm going to place a Mifair ultralight, ultralight tag there and I'm going to resend this command. So execute. Now I'm still not sure whether whether the tag has responded properly it all depends on how I place this tag on the board now I'm going to send the only way to know if the tag has responded is by sending the read data command so I'm going to have a quick look at what exactly the command the structure is the read data command the command code is uh, 0a followed by you have to send probably you know, not sure whether 00, 0 is the length I suppose and the response is the array of up to 508 bytes. So here there's a nice explanation here. Now we are going to send the read command. Probably you know the, the parameter 1 is the length of the bytes you want to read. So if I want to read 2 bytes, you have to send 0a, 0, 0, 2. And if you assume that you are reading a MIFI classic block, which has got 16, you are expecting 16 bytes of data, you will pass, you'll be passing the 16 here. 
so I'm going to send one more next command is we do have a read data command so this is the length I'm going to send 0 to so it's a finger crossed if everything worked fine you should see the value uh, 4 4 I think 0 0 so execute now look at that we received the two bytes of data which is 4 4 0 0 so that shows um, the REQA command worked the next command in the sequence was and if you go back to the REQA uh, ultralight documentation look at that we just received 4400 the next command is so how do we send the anti-collision here to send anti-collision one you still have to have the CRC disabled so I'm not going to do any changes to that you have to send 93 followed by the 20 and the expected response is 5 bytes so to do that I just got the command somewhere in my notepad okay so you're going to choose again send data now probably you now you can send data now here this time I'm going to send all the 8 bits in the command so that will be 0 0 followed by the command will be 9 3 followed by 2 0 and execute now we know that if the command was executed correctly you will be expecting the 5 bytes of data so to do that I'm going to delete this command and say use this command read data and the number of bytes I need is uh, 5 bytes is 0 5 and you can keep clearing this uh, locks if you don't want clear this now execute now it makes sense for me because I know this is the the UID of this tag and the 5 bytes again you have to understand um, everything about the type A I'm not going to spend time here again explain the same stuff now we got the 5 bytes as a response so that completes the anti-collusion step so we have received 5 bytes the next thing is I have to send this select command but this time for the select command I have to pass 9370 the select command followed by I have to pass all the 4 bytes just the first 4 bytes of the anti-collusion response and this time I need the CRC enabled as well as uh, this is the transmission side as well as the receiving side so before I send this command I have to make sure the CRC is enabled here I'm going to use a, a simple write with the with a with the or mask so back in the register I'm going to set the enable the CRC now if you go to the the CRC for RX read it we got the CRC disabled this time you know, I'm going to use a, a logical or operation I need a, a bit mask to set the bit I'm going to set this to 1 this is the mask and make sure you know you choosing this uh, or so right now this enables uh, the CRC for uh, receiving side do the same thing for the transmission side as well so set this to 1 and say right now we got both the CRC enabled now we are ready to send the next command which uh, the documentation says it's the is the select command is the you know anti collision uh, one select so here in order to use this command you must use the the five bytes were saved in the in the previous command this one now the command is 9370 followed by all this uh, five plus if you look at here so the CRC is automatically calculated and that's the reason why we have to enable it and also the tag also sends the CRC which uh, probably now will be verified uh, by the by the chip for integrity check so I'm going to send use this uh, send command send the data again this time we are sending all the 8 bits then this is followed by uh, the first select command so that is uh, uh, 93 and followed by let's see what it is 9370 70 followed by the five bytes of the last response that is this one this slot copy paste here and execute 
and when you execute what the documentation says you should get um, the value zero for this SAK now you have to read just one byte read data give a zero one say execute look at that we got zero for so we just managed to get the anti-collision uh, one pass through same thing you have to repeat for anti-collision uh, two as well again here this time we have before you send this uh, anti-collision uh, two you must have the crc disabled now we have done this couple of times so i'm going to do this quickly go to the registers go to the rx and read the value here no not status sorry the one about that read the value here so the crc is enabled i'm going to disable it i can have a mask with everything one except the last bit and i can use a logical bitwise in an and operation write it so i'm going to do the same thing for csc um, the transmission side create a mask with the bit i don't want set to zero and the and and write so now we have got the the crc disabled so we have to do the anti-collision too so go to send data so you can clear this thing go to the send data so we are going to send all eight bits so the anti-collision the two starts with the byte so here it's a nine five and two zero so it's a nine five and two zero so how easy is that if you have to send any command to the tag or the the card specific command you will end up using the send data command now execute now, what the document says is this should return you um, the five bytes of response. I'm going to show you something interesting, okay? Now, there is a way, there is a register inside PN580 that tells us how many bytes are ready in the, in the buffer. So, if you look at the documentation for the read data command, so this line here, it says, the Rx status register contains information to verify if the reception has been successful. Now, that says that there is something in there that tells you whether the, uh, the data is available or not. And if you look into the details of Rx status register, the bit 0 to 8, so this tells you number of bytes received. Now, in, in our case, we have sent this uh, anti-collision to expecting 5 bytes of data. If you go to this Rx status register, you know, everything is uh, colored here because this is a, a read-only register. You can't change the value. If you try to read, and if you look at the last eight bits of data, look at that. This has a bit pattern of 101. So, 101 is, uh, is a 5. Now, now it's telling that there are 5 bytes available to be read. So, that's exactly what we wanted. Now, if I go to read, uh, send the read data command and sorry I'm going to use a single command here read data command send five bytes you want to read execute and we got the remaining five bytes this also has got the remaining bytes of the UID okay so the next thing we we have to do is uh, with the anti the select command so before you do the third command, you have to have the, the CRC bit enabled here. So I'm going to keep a copy of this because you need for the selecting. Okay, I'm going to be quick. So CRC, read the value and see what it is. I need the CRC set. Now I'm going to use uh, the mask as one. Sorry, can't, yeah, mask as one. I'm going to do the write operation, write or operation. So write, and similarly, I'm going to go to the the transmitter configuration, set the or mask as one, and say write. So I've got both the CS enabled. Then I'm going to send. So this time it's the anti-collision to select zero zero. And so that will be the nine five seven zero four.
followed by whatever five bytes of data we received in this command we'll copy paste here now when this command is sent so we'll be expecting just one byte of data that is a zero zero for success so let's do it and just have some fun here just go and see the rx read the rx status register it says there is a one the bit is set to one so there is one byte of uh, data so i'm going to send the read command with the value zero one and execute you got the zero now is success so now we got the mefair ultralight tag activated and you can you can send in you know, a more commands to the tag probably you can send a read data command i'm going to try that now so the the read command returns 16 bytes of data the command structure is the command code 30 followed by the block address and you get 16 bytes of data now we already have crc enabled now we just have to send this uh, command 30 and the block address now clear send data it's a 00 the command is 30 followed by 00 execute now i'm going to look at and see how many bytes of data received it says 16 so you got 16 bytes of data here look at that one zero 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 this is 16 now if i go to read data and give it's a one zero keep in mind you you have to enter the hex number here one zero and execute look at that this is the first four uh, data blocks from the tag and the and you know that if you have seen my videos on VFR Ultra, right? the first four blocks also includes the UAD of the tag okay so we just you know we have, we have learned so many things in this thing you know you're comfortable now with the with setting the CRC you know how to check the the length of the response and you also know how to use this send data command or read data command you, with this knowledge probably you can start programming for the entire uh, mefair tags or you uh, know you can also work on mefair ultralight c where you can send uh, the 3d authentication the most important thing here is okay you have to be comfortable with the send data command send data and read data and obviously all the register bits you know depends on what you want to do so all these commands are put together inside inside this uh, the cpp file which i showed you now i've got i've got a tag here this is uh, the mefair ultralight c tag i can just place here and hit this activate and you will get the uid now whatever you have seen everything is going to single command okay so i think that's all you know this video was uh, you know this is too much to to grasp in one session but it's uh, it's really worth it okay thanks for watching